In early December 2013, a child in a town in Guinea was infected with Ebola from an unknown source and fell ill. She infected three family members, a nurse, and a midwife. All became ill, and some infected others in the community, including healthcare workers who transmitted an infection to hospital patients. And from this simple beginning, an Ebola epidemic developed that has resulted in thousands of deaths and impacted the lives of millions. This outbreak has now superseded 6,000 plus cases with about half as many fatalities, so a 50 to 60% case fatality rate. The challenge when we get a new condition in an area is that we will treat it like things that we are familiar with in ways that we're familiar. So if it feels like the flu, it feels like malaria, and then you would go to the clinic where you would normally get treatment. Without knowing that there's something else in the area, there's no reason to do anything differently. Many of these emerging virus infections start with very similar disease symptoms. You don't feel well, you may have muscle aches, um, a fever is typical of, of many of them. But this is just the first stage for Ebola virus. The incubation period can be quite long before we see the classical symptoms of hemorrhage. There have been 30 documented instances of at least one Ebola infection since this class of viruses was first identified in Democratic Republic of Congo in 1976. The current outbreak, which has largely been contained to Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, has resulted in more cases than all of these combined, leading to a variety of questions. Where has the virus been in between outbreaks? How do these outbreaks arise? And why is this outbreak so unusual compared to previous outbreaks of Ebola? I think it's a really interesting question to ask where is Ebola when it's not in the human population. And it's clearly in wildlife somewhere and it's spilling over. So the first place you think of looking is in the primates, in the animals that are closely related to us, looking to see, uh, looking to see if you can find the virus. But it's not found very commonly in those animals. Well, it is, but it is only when the animals are dead. The second obvious place to look is in the rodents, and there's been lots of investigation and no sign of it. But with this instance, in this recent Ebola outbreak, we're pretty convinced that it's actually coming through the fruit bats. As the Ebola epidemic spreads, it has been revealed that transmission is highly variable from person to person and setting to setting. It has also affected urban zones, which it hasn't in the past. Uh, these outbreaks in, in previous history have really been restricted to very rural areas. This outbreak now in Conakry, in Freetown, in Monrovia, these are all very populated urban settings. We need to know if there's been multiple uh, points of introduction or if it's single. We can use the genetic sequence data from the Ebola virus to get an idea of where it came from and how it's being transmitted. Because over the last decade, um, the, there's evidence from using these what we call phylogenetic trees, think of them as family trees, that there have been multiple uh, independent cross-species transmission events that have occurred that lead to these uh, smaller outbreaks. So the outbreak that's currently going on uh, now this 2014 outbreak, we can trace using, again, the virus phylogenies. And if there is human-to-human -human transmission, we anticipate that the virus sequences isolated from humans will be very closely related. And in fact, that's the case. There's certainly uh, diversity that's occurring within the viruses because they're evolving within the individuals, but they all seem to be related to one emergent strain that's quite distantly related to those that were circulating about a decade ago in uh, the DRC. This is of scientific interest, but also of practical importance, because it suggests that nothing dramatic has changed about the interactions between humans and wildlife, and that control efforts for this outbreak need to be focused on transmission from human to human. Is this has become highly spatial. So it started in a village, it spread to other places. It's just like a fire running through elements that will burn easily. So we'll get a fire break out in one place and then a spark, a person, will travel to another place and set off another epidemic. Unlike influenza, which can be transmitted through coughing and sneezing, 
Ebola is transmitted through contact with blood and other bodily fluids. And of course, different behaviors lead to different rates of exposure. Unfortunately, funeral and burial practices in much of West Africa involve washing and touching of the body of the deceased, which can lead to transmission from those who have died of Ebola infection to those handling the body. A further complication is that healthcare workers commonly come into contact with bodily fluids while caring for patients, and in the absence of strict sanitation and protection guidelines, the doctors and nurses who are providing care are at high risk both for getting infected and for infecting others. If you look at previous outbreaks of Ebola hemorrhagic fever, Ebola virus disease, most healthcare workers get infected in healthcare facilities. They're coming in contact with patients that are uh, infected, that are, that are symptomatic. Um, typically not in the Ebola treatment units. We're talking healthcare workers that are infected at primary care facilities, which if you look back in history or look back in time for this current uh, outbreak, the majority of the healthcare workers were infected at these frontline clinics. Limited knowledge about the nature and transmission of Ebola virus has resulted in fear and uncertainty about the current outbreak and may have contributed to behaviors that facilitate its spread. Something like just telling people about Ebola, where 50 to 90 percent are likely to die, and it happening in your area or you seeing somebody where it happens, fear is a likely result. And we've learned that people will act on that fear. If we can convince people of recommended actions, people will often use that fear and behave in those recommended actions. The projections of the Ebola epidemic have ranged from thousands to millions of cases. Unfortunately, predicting the Ebola outbreak is very difficult because we've only seen this initial exponential growth phase. Most epidemics are limited, either because the conditions favoring transmission change, control efforts like vaccination, isolation, and the use of protective clothing slow the spread, or the epidemic spreads so far that it runs out of susceptible people to infect. Most of the predictions so far have been high because we don't yet know which will be the factor that finally limits Ebola transmission. We are not even near the top of this, the tip of this outbreak. We're months and months away from any effective uh, intervention uh, from a phar pharmacological uh, perspective. So we really have to focus on the non-pharmacological -pharma interventions, that is behavioral modification. Really the only way that we're going to stop this outbreak currently uh, is getting the information out to individuals to protect themselves. I think there's several things that we can learn from this outbreak. Uh, one of those is how important it is to have interdisciplinary teams. We have to be able to show people and tell people this is not a good behaviour. We have to be changing people's behaviour in relation to transmission. So we need epidemiologists, we need virologists, we need social sciences working on those issues together. We need to invest in our communication strategies and invest in the people and the time and the resources to develop those communication strategies from the beginning so that we have something that we can use in that environment that is going to be effective and appropriate for the audiences that are there. So while medical intervention is clearly needed, information and communication about the virus, its transmission, and the best practices to limit its spread are also critical tools in the fight against Ebola.